now boiling potatoes. <laughs> So everybody, welcome to uh, to the party. For those who don't know me, I'm Katie's uh, dad, and a very proud dad I am as well. Yay! Thank you very much. <laughs> Can I go now? <laughs> uh, this is the best part of the speeches, as you'll appreciate. And uh, this is a bit you have to endure rather than actually enjoy. <clears throat> So thank you all so much for coming and making Katie and Sandy's day such a fantastic special time for them. Uh, Leslie and I would ex like to extend a special welcome to those who have come from so far, of which there are quite a few. Katie's uncle Tim, Auntie Terry, Jonathan and Kristen, who have come from USA in the uh, county of Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you do with this one because this is, these come from Switzerland. Do you do a yodel for these two? Because we've got uh, Jenny and Manuel and uh, my sister Anna and her husband Fritz. So it's a bit of a yodel for them, I think. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> uh, I wish um, Sanji's family could be here, but unfortunately they can't. And uh, we, we would really love them to be here, but it wasn't to be. But uh, Leslie and I are planning on going to Goa in 2018 and we're going to meet them. And, uh, we have a good time. No, you can't all come. Huh? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, I need, uh, there are a few thank yous to say because this doesn't happen just like that. So can I please thank um, everyone for help in getting this venue ready? Uh, my sister Jill for loaning the Corbier to us, which is a fantastic setting, I'm sure you all agree. Uh, I, I'm going to thank Angus for the lamb, but we haven't tasted it yet, so perhaps I'm a bit, a bit early, but uh, we hopefully will be okay. Uh, Simon for his help with the electrics, because uh, without that we'd all be in total darkness. <coughs> Pippa for her, all her decorations and all the lovely things that you will make much more of as the evening goes on and it gets dark, hopefully. Uh, Debbie, Becky, Helen. They were all at my house this morning. It was absolute murder. <laughs> uh, Calvin, Sam, James Ferguson for the food and Sam Yarod for the bar. And all the family members who have... Uh, helped which makes it so much easier and they're always there to help so thank you and a big handshake and everything else to the family who have done so much yes. particularly Christopher who's I think virtually camped here Uh, I need to thank all the people who have supplied all the equipment and everything else, which has uh, been great. All arrived on time yesterday and was good. Uh, I just want to make one request. Um, would you please all feel very free to use the toilet facilities as much as you like, because they cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> and I really don't want them to go back empty. <laughs> So I've got a few words about Katie. I, it's traditionally, I have to speak about my daughter. Um, Gary actually said a heck of a lot about her that I, I was going to say. So, uh, But as you all know, she's the youngest of four. And she made sure she was noted as the youngest <laughs> of four and has always made her present felt. In fact, when she was born in the PEH, mothers and the babies were kept separate in different, uh, different wards. But, uh, Katie was always been heard. In fact, the nurses said, uh, Mrs. Brock, your baby is crying. We knew that because within, I mean, there were probably 
six foot, I should think, of uh, insulation between the two walls, but we could still hear. <laughs> You've got a lot to say, Dad. <laughs> uh, so that was her birth. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> moving on a few years, I, I will, in sentimental dad fashion, I can always remember Katie running through the fields with the rest of her brothers and sisters and Debbie and Sally in their big wellies. They wore wellies all year round in those days. They never took them off. But Debbie and Sally always looked after Katie who was trying to, so desperately hard, trying to keep up with everybody. But uh, they, were, they were wonderful. They were like sisters to her. So, uh, a little bit later, in her early teens, after a very slight misunderstanding with her father, <laughs> Katie decided she was going to leave home. <laughs> but it was only a very slight misunderstanding, Katie. Yeah, she but she... <laughs> <laughs> so Katie decided to leave home, but she had forgotten. It was about nine o'clock at night, on a cold February night, and she was still in her pyjamas. <laughs> she raced out of the door, slamming it in the way she always did, and said, I'm leaving, and I'm not coming back. Well, five minutes later, she did come back. Mm. <laughs> yeah, she probably had a cigarette behind her, but she didn't have decided I'd come back. <laughs> uh, when she actually did leave home, um, seeing her off at the airport, she went on one of her many travels and uh, to be honest she was an unsure 18 year old quite frightened I think of the big wide world uh, but we saw her off and I swear to you her rucksack was virtually as big as her <laughs> but she coped and on her return she became a confident young lady and it was a lovely change to see her. Katie got a job in a bank and she did really well she was sent to Singapore to work and spent many weekends sightseeing all over the Far East. Well, it's cheap out there, so you can do that. Uh, returning to Guernsey, she took time out to study yoga, as Gary had said, in Goa, and met Sanjeev there. And by golly, he's still here. I've got five down there. <laughs> <There's a bro. laughs> <laughs> Anybody else not got one? <laughs> Christopher's <laughs> never got one. <laughs> okay, I'll let, I'll let the young lady carry on, as I will be. Uh, she was working for part-time in a bank when she came back, um, teaching yoga at other times of the day and in the evenings. But with Leslie and my encouragement, she took the big step uh, to concentrate on her yoga full-time, which was a big step because she was giving up a well-paid job to go into the deep unknown, but she, in her own way, survived it and blossomed. So Leslie and I are extremely proud of her and what she has achieved. She really is a daughter all parents will be proud of. No, she's not. <laughs> she is. Silence, please. <laughs> this is my bit. <laughs> Quiet. Uh, she is a kind, thoughtful, and always willing to help others person, which I think is a credit to her mum because she is exactly the same. And if you are looking for anybody to give you any inspiration in life, Katie is the person for you. She has done really, really well. Now I get on to Sanji.
It's all right, Sanju. You can stand still. It's no worry. You don't have to run away. I'm saying Sanju has got to be a bit of a special person to have captured Katie's heart the way he has. He has. <clears throat> Sanju has very quickly become part of the extended Brock family, which is no mean feat, to be honest. And how he has done it? By being himself, basically. Kind, caring and considerate. And I say that with um, all sincerity. He's a very nice guy. He's great with children, which is a move in the right direction. Because <laughs> I only really, I only have four grandchildren, Sandy, and that really is not enough. <laughs> Don't have to, you don't have to start now, you can just relax. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was really impressed when uh, Sanjeev, uh, I asked Katie on one of her sessions in the park how many uh, customers she had for her yoga session, and she very proudly said, oh, I had about 30 or 40. I said, that's very good, Katie. Sanjeev, standing behind me, piped up and said, no, Katie, that's not good yet. When you have 100, that'll be good. <laughs> So that's pretty impressive, I reckon. I like that attitude. <laughs> so as soon as he got his put work permit here, Sandy had a job. No messing about, a job, straight away. Which is also pretty good. He can turn his hand to everything and anything by uh, the seats you can see over there, which Sandy made. Uh, and if you want to take orders, I'm his agent and I will take them for you. And I take 25%. I've nearly finished, uh, thank God. We are, we are really so lucky that we've had two wonderful daughters-in-law. And they are the apple of my eye and I love them deeply, both of them. But I am sure darling Katie has found her wonderful man to be my first son-in-law. <laughs> to, add, to add to our family. Now, if I could ask you all to uh, raise your glasses to Katie and Sandy. May the future bring you happiness, wisdom and children. So we will be grandparents again. But in all seriousness, I give you my wholehearted blessing. I know, know you will last a lifetime, you too. I am so happy this day has finally come. Sanjeev and So now I think I call upon Sanjeev to reply. He also has yellow paper. I thought if, if I had blue I'd look a bit of a pont so I had yellow. Yeah. small not really big thank you dad for your great speech okay <laughs> on behalf of my wife and I would like to thank you all for coming here especially those who are traveling from of the island and also all the way from Sam. Sam. <laughs> Mum and Dad, thank you so much for all your help with today. We have a couple of gifts for you.
You look amazing. Uh, I love you so much and I am so lucky to have you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses for my beautiful wife. Break! Leon, thank you for being my best man, organizing my stag do. What a night <laughs> with a cricket <laughs> landing on his elbows, wrists. Now like a cat. Thank you to thank you to my bushes, bushes for all your help and support. I would like to toast and thank to my bridesmaids. You all look amazing. To the bridesmaids. Leon. Your next mate. Wow. Everybody, give it up for Sam! Okay, so, a couple of housekeeping rules before I start. In the standing ovation, please do not rush forward. There could be a crowd crush. And if you have a mobile phone, please leave it turned on. You can keep yourself entertained. Now, in all honesty, this speech is going to be a little bit like me. Short and not very funny. <laughs> okay, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Leon Robertson and I am the best man. But I actually I feel a bit self conscious calling myself that. So for the rest of the day, just call me the best or the man. <laughs> so I'd like to start by thanking Tony and Sam for their great speeches. Yay! To the bridesmaids, Joe, Lexi, Sienna and Phoebe. Yay! I'm sure everyone will join me in saying that they all look beautiful today and are outshone only by Katie. <laughs> I would also like to thank Katie's Auntie Jilly for hosting the wedding here. What a location, honestly. This is the first time we've partied here and I'm sure it'll be the last. But 
It is an amazing venue. <laughs> Tilly, I'll do my best to make sure that none of the ushers are asleep in the bushes at the end of the night. Or Mark Bosia. <laughs> Thanks must also go to Katie's parents, Leslie and Tony, for all the help with the wedding. I know that Katie and Sam really appreciate all your efforts with everything that's gone on today. I'd also like to thank the ushers, Alfie, Alex and Rossi. You boys look amazing. Yay! Tom and Owen, well, <laughs> you look a bit like Ronnie and Reggie Cray, mate. <laughs> Yeah, top, top those guys up, top those, the fierce looking ones. The angry guys, the angry ones. Okay, so um, unlike many of the best men you've probably encountered over the years, who were either old school friends or childhood friends of the groom, Sam and I only met actually last year. So um, not knowing a lot about him, I made some inquiries with the Goa police station. <laughs> I thought that'd be a good place to start. Now, but. They had nothing to say about him, except he was the perfect guest whenever he stayed. So this is my first time being a best man, but by the dread in my voice and the shaking cards, you've probably realised that already. So to make sure I do the job correctly, I spoke to Katie a couple of weeks ago. So Katie, what do you want me to do on your wedding day? <laughs> Just get smashed and have a rave, mate. <laughs> So what about my best man duties? So I had to turn to the internet and apparently my three main responsibilities are making sure Sam arrived on time. Yeah. 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 Making sure he looked good. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure he was sober. Yeah. Two out of three is not bad. <laughs> As I mentioned, I've only known Sam for just over a year and the short time that I've come to know him has been a real pleasure. We became friends instantly and it really does feel like we've known each other a lot longer. Sam, you became known as Uncle Sam to my children straight away and I know you'll be a great dad when the time comes. I feel so happy to share this special day with you both and I look forward to sharing many more special milestones with you. It's an honour to be your best man, Sam even though I'm 99% sure you've only chosen me to make yourself look better in the photos. That's <laughs> <laughs> alright, that's alright. Right. Right. He's a good looking lad. He's a good looking lad. <laughs> so, stag do. <laughs> One of my duties as the best man was to organise a stag do. I'm sure you've all seen the film The Hangover, yeah? Well, it was nothing like that. <laughs> no lap dances, no ping pong balls, and no handcuffing Sam naked to a blow up doll. All in all, it was fairly low key. But as Sam said to me at the time, when you live with Katie, it's nice to have a break from those sort of things. <laughs> So at the start of the June, we headed off to Sark for a day and a night of drinking and camping. We arrived and stopped off at the Bel Air for a quick 11am beer before heading to the campsite. 
After the first five or six drinks, it became apparent that we weren't moving. So after a quick word with Mark Ponton, who's the landlord there, we set up our tents in the beer garden and got to work on the beers, ciders, gin and tonics, rum and cokes, Malibu and milks, sambucas, tequilas and teddy bears. <laughs> Now, as you all know, it's tradition for the groom to be stitched up by the best man with a ridiculous outfit. So about a month before the stag do, I explained this to Sam. I'm not dressing up. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. I'm not dressing up. You are, mate. You are. So for the next month, I sent Sam WhatsApp pictures, messages on a daily basis of men in ladies' underwear, mankinis, nurses' outfits, stockings and suspenders. Honestly, my Google history was something disgusting. <laughs> Sorry. Got a technical issue here. So, I knew that Sam really didn't want to dress up on his stag do, so I had to wait until he was fairly tipsy. So after about four hours or so of drinking, I gave him his fancy dress outfit in a plastic bag and sent him off to the Bel Air toilets to get changed. Aww. Well, honestly, the look on his face when he came out. Oh. There we go, Sam. <laughs> He's already got it. Hold it up, mate. Hold it up. Oh, You've got to take, you take it out. <laughs> <laughs> he was so pleased that he wasn't in drag. <laughs> Superfly. <laughs> Honestly, he was so pleased that he wasn't in drag that he didn't stop smiling for the rest of the night. <laughs> and what a smile he's got. <laughs> Every time he flashes that smile, people will do whatever he says. Like shots of tequila. <laughs> of course, he has loads of other great qualities. But I don't think that Katie saw him that first time across the room in the magic tree bar <laughs> in Goa and thought, hmm, what a great looking personality. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, Katie, you look beautiful today. Oh, yeah. I know how much effort you've put into planning today and I'm sure that everyone will agree with me and say it's been a fantastic day so far. We still got crickets dancing to look forward to. No dancing on the tables though, cricket. Anyone who has seen Sam and Katie together will know that they make each other complete. She finishes his sentences and he finishes her meals. I'd like to finish with a couple of tips for Sam and Katie. Marriage is like the sweetie shelf at the newsagents. Like a bounty bar, your marriage should be a taste of paradise. Relish your time together as if every day was the first day of a tropical holiday. Like a curly whirly, marriage is full of twists and turns. Learn to relax about things you can't control and enjoy the ride. Like the fingers of a Twix, <laughs> you're in it together. <laughs> Remember, once you're married, there's no room for a third finger. Like a double decker. <laughs> Marriage works when you complement each other. Celebrate your differences and make sure the softest one goes on top. <laughs> like a Cadbury's flake, you've got to take things slowly. Do it too quickly and you'll end up making a mess on the carpet. <laughs> like a Yorkie. Like a Yorkie. You've got to tackle life one chunk at a time. Bite into cha each challenge that fate delivers. Like a Karamak, there will be times why you wonder why you bothered in the first place. <laughs> Try to remember how sweet it was before that sickly aftertaste kicks in. <laughs> and like the big box behind the counter that's kept for special occasions, you've got to take time to smell the roses. Finally, some special advice for Sam. If you ever feel the need to get into her Snickers, <laughs> make sure you take them off before she gets home.
Sam, if you and Katie ever have a disagreement, ask yourself this question. Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Ne never ever laugh at Katie's choices. You're one of them. And always remember, as my wife tells me on a daily basis, happy wife, happy life. I wish you all the best, and while I would say good luck, I know you won't need it. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been patient enough. Please raise your glasses for Katie and Sam. Yeah. <laughs> 